Kate Biddle, Trauma First Responder. Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. Many might find that um, the work that we do here at Beach Brook, treating abused and disturbed children, is overwhelming and perhaps even depressing, but I always look at my work with a great deal of optimism. Seeing me here tonight, standing in front of you, you might assume that I'm just a typical, pleasant enough, suburbanite, little white lady with no real trauma in my background. But you don't know what I've been through. Picture me, homeless with multiple addictions, unable to sustain employment or healthy relationships. I did grow up in a middle class suburb of Cleveland, and that did not prevent me from growing up with a lot of abuse and having these kinds of problems. As a result of my history, I dedicated all of my energy to finding paths of healing for myself, and in this process became determined to help others find ways to break their legacies of abuse and hurt. I am not alone. You do not know who has had trauma simply judging from appearances. I would like everybody on this side of the room to raise your hands and let it call on you, but raise your hands really high. I mean everybody. Thank you. And everybody look around and see how many hands are raised. Thank you. And you can put your hands down now. But as you do, know that research has found that 52% of the population has had trauma in their childhoods. That's more than half of us, not just those coming in for treatment at Beach Brook. Of course, we deal with the most serious of situations, with children who have survived severe neglect, physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. At Beach Brook, we serve approximately 24,000 children and their families each year working through these kinds of problems. Most of our children have had multiple traumas through no fault of their own, often perpetrated by the very people that they're closest to, the ones that they depend on for care and for protection. These caregivers who abuse and neglect almost always are adults who have had complex trauma in their own lives and who never got the help that they needed. Her people, her people. And so the legacy goes on. Before we had this focus on trauma and treatment, we tended to pathologize people who have been traumatized. We thought there was something wrong with them. Remember when people used to say, oh, they're crazy? Or we considered them really bad, like we needed to lock, lock them up and throw away the key. We now know that it's not so much what's wrong with these people as it's what's wrong with what happened to them and how they learned to survive. Healing requires making deep changes in our patterns of thinking and behavior. Supportive relationships are needed to inspire, to encourage people to want to learn how to do better, to how, how to have better lives. Personally, I know treatment works. It has saved my life. And professionally, I know that I've seen people repeatedly making important changes in their lives to improve things for the better. My Angelou said it well. I did the best I knew, and when I knew better, I did better. As Linda said, we all know that it takes a village to raise a child, and that's in the best of times, the best of circumstances. And at Beechbrook, it's even more profoundly true. When we come together as a community, each of us bringing our own special talents, our, our own ways of giving to, you know, really promoting the conditions that these children and families need to heal. That's when the children in turn can begin to create, the, through their own healing, a safer, saner, more compassionate community. Please join me in caring about the work that we do here at Beachbrook and cultivating a kinder and healthier world. Thank you very much.